social issues. So on behalf of the university and the participants, I welcome ma'am uh, to this uh, session and hand over the mic to ma'am to make presentation on the topic, literature and the culture of technology. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for that wonderful uh, introduction. And I thank you for giving me this opportunity to interact with the, uh, you know, all the scholars taking part in this refresher course. So I'll make my presentation. Am I audible? Yeah, ma'am, you are audible. Okay, sir. Just yes, ma'am. So is my screen visible? Yeah, ma'am, it's visible. Yeah. So once again, thank you. And the topic of my discourse will be literature and the culture of technology. Yes, so to uh, begin with, uh, I would be just focusing upon what literature is, what the culture of technology means, and again, what is the relationship between literature and culture. Now, when we talk about literature, broadly speaking, it's a collection of written works which also can uh, be used to talk about art forms such as fiction, drama, poetry, and prose. Now, the definition also expands to include oral literature. Literature is also a method of recording, preserving, transmitting knowledge, and entertaining. Now, literature can also have a social, a spiritual, political, and psychological role. When we talk about spiritual, it means to elevate the spirit and the soul and also have the power to motivate and inspire. If you look at literature uh, having a political role, it means to give voice to one who doesn't have. And when we talk about the psychological role, there is a strong correlation between literature and psychology because both deal with human beings their reactions, perceptions, fears, conflicts, reconciliations, again, the individuals and social concepts. Now, literature as it is has seven literary standards. The first one being universality. It is to appeal to everyone, regardless of one's culture, race, gender, Universality describes any piece of writing that appeals to the hearts, the minds of the readers. The appeal is considered universal because of its ability to cross gender, racial, and cultural barriers, regardless of type. The second literary standard is artistry. It means it should have an aesthetic appeal to everyone and thus possess a sense of beauty. Artistry describes literature that is aesthetically appealing and reveals or conveys hidden truth and beauty. Now, this type of literature appeals to broad audiences and also possess a sense of beauty in the writing that could even feel poetic. Then comes the intellectual value. When we talk about this, it means to stimulate critical thinking that enriches the mental process of abstract and reasoning 
making man realize the fundamental truths of life and its nature. Now, intellectual value takes readers, you know, into different areas so that they have their own different opinions about what qualifies as intellectual. Literature with intellectual value promotes critical thinking, which enhances both the abstract and the reason-based thought processes, and therefore makes readers focus on the fundamental truths of life and nature. The fourth point is suggestiveness, which is to unravel and conjure man's emotional power to define symbolism, implied meanings, images, messages, thereby evoking emotion, visions above and beyond the plane of ordinary life and experiences. Now, the power of suggestion allows the work to inspire and provoke thoughts and understanding beyond the actual words written on the page. Literature also has a spiritual value which elevates the spirit and the soul and thus have the power to motivate, to inspire, draw from suggested morals or lessons from different literary genres. Permanence is another aspect of literature and this means to endure across time and draw out the time factor. Timeliness, which is occurring at a particular time, and timeliness, which means remaining invariable throughout time. The last point here is style, and this refers to the distinct way the author expresses his or her thoughts. The words can be unique, it can be creative, it can entertain, works can be memorable. Style is an element that is subject to interpretation by readers in terms of its appeal. A particular literary piece must possess these seven literary standards in order to be called as pureless epitome of artwork capable of enduring different kinds of emotions and also subject to alterations. Now, the term Literature is actually derived from the Latin word which focuses upon learning, writing, and grammar. Now, originally, it also means writings formed with letters, and the term has also been applied to spoken or sung texts. Excuse now, me, ma'am. Yes, sir. The slides are not moving. Just a minute, sir. Moving, sir. Moving. Is it visible, sir? Yeah, visible. Sir, is it, it visible? Was, it was visible. visible huh. Just move it once, ma'am. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah, it's it's working. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Now is it visible? Yeah, ma'am. Fine. Oh. So as I said, the best um, definition comes from Encyclopedia Britannica, which says literature is the best expression of the best thought reduced to writing. Now, on the other hand, technology is the application of scientific knowledge for any practical purpose. When we talk, talk about technology culture, it refers to human conventions, rituals, norms, maybe their language, stories, the symbols that evolve alongside technology. For the culture that is created through the shared experiences of using and creating technology. Oh, department, I am here. Okay, 
Now, uh, referring to technology and literature, you know, from a long time past, for example, you can talk about famous Victorian critic Matthew Arnold, who wrote in his essay titled Literature and Science, where he discussed about the relationship between literature and science. Now, so, according to OTP, kiske paas jata hai? According to Matthew Arnold. Nee, wo to nahi bol rahe na? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, audible. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, there's some kind of disturbance. Okay, to continue, uh, Matthew Arnold says that literature is the basic for knowing ourselves and the world, and science is one thing to just look at literature. It means that science is only a part of literature. Even uh, the renowned writer, novelist, D.H. Lawrence, compared literature with other disciplines like science, medicine, and philosophy. Now, no matter science and technology profoundly affected the production and reception of literature, technology is a major player in this connection. Now, there is also a great fear taking the wider impact of technology on written literature. Now, the question is being asked why we should continue with the current form of literature. Rapidly growing influence of technology has altered the way in which we live and think. The cultural, social, and economic life of man has changed drastically. Now, literature adopted technical changes to keep pace with pressing needs of the time. Since the invention of various techniques in writing, literature has changed. Now this change is not limited to technical aspects only, but the very production and reception of literature has changed. Now various writers use technology or they have made technology as a part of their subject matter in creation, technology has become a part of the environment within which literature works. Now, since the very existence of literature, technology has remained a subject. Now, the word technology has its roots in the Greek word techne, meaning craft or making. Literature being a creation or making something new has strong relationship with technology. The, like, the second part of the word ology means an intellectual system or an intellectual discourse. Now for Martin, the word technology is a form of consciousness. Now when you say a form of consciousness, it is a state of being aware of something within. It is evident that technology is a subject of literature. Now, even Chaucer to the modern postmodernist authors, they have shown technology as or in various forms of literature. These writers have depicted technology as their subject matter. And the same has also been shown as a service of transformation to the humanity. Now, of course, there are a number of positive and negative you know, uh, impacts on society in general and literature in particular. Now looking at human technology relations, human beings are inherently technological beings or, you know, rather we depend a lot on technology these days. Now there are a number of social, cultural and political implications too. That human technology relationship focuses on three vital aspects. The first is technological mediation, that is negotiation. Now, this theory of technological mediation offers a framework to analyze the different roles technology plays in human existence and in the society. Its central idea being that technology, when they are used, 
helped to shape the relationship between human beings and the world at large. Rather, approaching technologies as material objects opposed to human subjects, or as mere extension of human beings, it sees them as mediators of the human world relations. Now, this mediation theory is uh, rooted in the post phenomenological approach of philosophy. Now, this technological mediation has implications for philosophical theory and for practices of design and technological development. Practically, this theory can help inform practices of design because it enables designers to analyze, anticipate, and even experiment with the relationship between human beings and the products and the impact of technologies on human experiences and behaviors and on social practices. Coming to the next one, that is technology and identity. Technology has actually changed the way people view themselves and others. Technology has changed the way people express themselves. It has both positive and negative impact on individuals' self-identity. Now, identity includes knowledge, understanding, likes, dislikes, your perception. Anything that makes you unique is your identity. Technology has also taught us to develop self-awareness. Technology has taught us to develop or to get feedbacks. Now, this feedback has impacted our development this technology has given us exposure to external validation. And by increasing this external validation, it also depicts its own version of identity. Now, many people find social media to be an expression of freedom and exploration, maybe a way to document their lives, a creative outlet, something to showcase their strength and also medium to help control one's own content. Technology and environment talks about the profoundly shaped society, the economy and the environment that is a product of technology. Now, technology may cause a number of environmental and social problems, but at the same time, it also helps to address environmental degradation, climate change, waste management, maybe food scarcity, and other global challenges. Technologies such as artificial intelligence or machine learning, geospatial mapping are powering the fifth industrial revolution, and we have the potential to help solve our climate goals. Now, these technologies are also powering organizations to solve traditional problems. In a way, digital transformation is a process where replacing of the traditional ways are taking place and enabling a higher level of performance, innovation, and creativity. Now it's necessary to harness the digital revolution to drive forward environmental sustainability using a very high, you can say a combination of high and low technical solutions. We need to use digital technology to engage and empower governments, companies, and citizens to adopt environmentally sustainable practices, policies, and business models. Now, the evolving relationship between humans and computers. Now, there is a dramatic shift in the way humans interact with computers. This interaction has undergone a dramatic shift 
and it has a huge impact or will have a huge impact in future. Now, if um, you remember the 1968 film, A Space Odyssey, in which it was predicted about a future omnipresent machine, which could assume the role of a colleague or a crew member. And this colleague would also be capable of speech recognition, natural language processing, interpreting human behavior, and also automated reasoning among other things. Now, while we are, you know, some way from seeing this as a reality in the workplace, it is a direction that human computer interaction is heading with the potential for a level playing field to eventually exist between human and the machine. The second aspect here is from toolbox to colleague. Now, in the very early days of computing, the humans served the computers by feeding it data through a mechanism such as a punch card to keep it running. But today, the computer has evolved into more of a toolbox accessible via the two-dimensional interface of the screen supporting us in what we need to do. Now, gradually, the dynamic between humans and machines is shifting with the computer on course to become a more pervasive form of intelligence that can surface through all digital platforms and computer systems. And this in turn will also help individuals to complete their tasks more easily and efficiently. There is also a relationship or an emotional bond between humans and computers. Now, if the two can work together in a cooperative manner, we could as well end up with an established relationship of trust. Now, the computer has its own way of looking at the world, helping us as humans to be successful in other areas. Now, in future at workplace, we may see the computer learning from the individual and eventually taking on repetitive monotonous tasks, thereby freeing up individuals to do something more productive and cognitive. We may also see the voice assistants knowing best in some scenarios, making recommendations or suggestions to human beings, making calculations or calculative insights regarding human performance, advising them on how to prioritize their workload or how to make best use of small time frame. They may be available for decision making or suggesting when they should take a break. Now, eventually, these principles could be applied to more complex scenes with the computer enforcing its recommendation upon its human colleagues. Now, regarding the future of work, the scenario of a computer becoming the dominant player is quite obvious, and it's also a cause of concern. However, our world is shaped towards human cognition and artificial intelligence is still programmed by humans and also can advance as fast as we choose. Now, the progression from computer-shaped interfaces to human-shaped interfaces will enable, individuals, will enable individuals to communicate and collaborate with computing systems in a natural and human way. In many cases, we have um, been exploring the human computer interaction, which will be not only intuitive, but intelligent and ultimately very useful, leaving the workplace as the same, but also with a very different concept. Now, how is technology changing the literary world. Now, the fast and effective communication is actually a reward of technology. Various platforms have been provided for the writers to reach out to the masses. There are several books published online in digital form. 
the response of the breeders to these digital more than overwhelming. If you have heard something regarding digital rights, it is agreed that the book can be online available through e-reader or mobile. Now the old idea that is publication means a printed book is something old fashioned. Publication is taking place in a virtual form. It has the potentials to reach to readers who do not actually prefer to read. The online publication of books is attracting a large number of readers due to its presentation. Now, uh, some giant players of technology like you know, Google, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple, they are taking much interest in the production and circulation of literature digitally. The publication giant, that is Amazon, was the first to introduce its e-reader as Kindle. Now, there are also book fairs, and these have been the turning point to a way of way to propagate an idea that online publication is not only a possible task, but also a very effective means to reach out to the masses, expending less. Talking about technology and its devices, they have offered a unique platform for renowned authors as well as to common people. People are now easily expressing themselves through means of electronic media like the blog or social networking sites. There is a walk. Famous personalities are sharing their views with readers through their blogs. Technology has also enabled this one-to-one -one correspondence between an author and a reader. This new way of communicating is adding new dimensions to the literary fraternity. This can also provide for healthy discussions about reception and understanding literature in a more comprehensible manner among you know, common readers, maybe scholars and researchers too. Moreover, when you talk about the online reception of literature in academics, it is growing day by day. A large number of institutions have been designing their course content online these courses consist of courses on literature, language, teaching, creative writing, and so on. This availability, this availability of designing courses will definitely bring about fruitful results. Now, there is a flood of information, or you can say a reservoir of resources available to the researchers in the form of information available on the internet. Sharing of digital information among researchers has opened up new horizons in the advancement of research. This will definitely attract more scholars towards research. Technology has also opened new prospects to the field of translation. Now, the development of translation was facing uh, severe, severe difficulties, actually, in the past, maybe due to the non-availability of dictionaries or the scarcity of reference books, maybe due to limited resources, which were all considered as big hurdles in the way of translation. But as technology advances, the process of translation has got much easier. There are online dictionaries, thesaurus, reference books, resources made available for translation. Translation has also developed as one way of earning for new writers and editors. There are many softwares or tools available online, which has all facilitated towards the process of translation. And the result is that there are n number of books being translated into several languages. Now, talking about uh, Hollywood or Bollywood, there are several successful directors who have also been inspired from literary works. They look towards literature as their muse. 
movie is the modern version of drama. Adaptations of classics are frequent. Drama was the leading genre of literature during the Elizabethan age and the restoration period, and somehow there was a gradual decline from the Augustan age to the revival of drama by Eliot. The drama gained a resurgence in the form of movies, and movies are an outstanding example of modern technology, which has the capacity to reach even to the illiterate ones. Now, industrial revolution actually created a number of problems such as, you know, migration, maybe displacement, urbanization, slums, identity crisis, unemployment, pollution, exploitation, so many different things. This resulted due to the advancement of technology. But the contemporary problems and the probable solutions to them were also taken up by writers like Charles Dickens, George Eliot, Robert Browning, who addressed these problems through literature. That the modern and postmodern writers are dealing with problems in a wider sense in the terms of uh, maybe race exploitation, gender issues, identity, migration, marginalization, and so many other issues, which is all an outcome of technology. Increasing pollution is a gift of technology to which we are accustomed. Now, many scientists and philosophers are warning the levels of various forms of pollution. Now, the problems of these pollution is described to contemporary literature. And an attempt has been made or is being made rather to make people aware about the different crises that we are facing. Now, uh, when discussing about technology, it can also be a subject of literature. Technology is being considered by creative writers as a contrasting force to literature, but this can be seen in romantic poems. Almost all classical literature texts depicts technology as something evil or sinister. Now, many Victorian, modern, and postmodern writers have made use of technology as a subject matter for their literature. Advancement of science and technology in modern period compelled many of the artists to experiment. Now, this experimentation took place not only in literature, but also in various other forms of art, like architecture, painting, sculpture, music. For example, James Joyce, Virginia Woolf experimented the same in novels. While Auden found Eliot, they produced a new kind of drama or poetry. Samuel Beckett, Albert Camus, Franz Kafka, T.S. Eliot, they changed the way of writing a drama. The technology does not only bring about physical change, but it changes or it does rather change the way of thinking and living. But Thomas Python and American novelist is concerned or his work concerns the strong relationship between technology and society. The use of technology coupled with psychological dependencies upon the same is shown by him. He depicted the essential and the reciprocal nature of contemporary society and its relationship with technology. He disclosed nature in the continuous struggle between technology's advancement on us and in return, you know, our response to the same. Talking about spy fiction, this itself is a literature as a form of information where juvenile fiction is the only genre to represent technology in an affirmative way. Children's literature manifested technology in a very benevolent manner. And therefore, te literature and technology have impacted each other. Literature has remained a witness of the various 
changes taking place all through the centuries. Many things got changed in the course of time. Literature also changed its means of production and reception. But it is having the same cult which had before wider the impact of technology. If you look at this slide, uh, at the end, you know, I got a very beautiful quote which says there is a common refrain in literary criticism which says the author is dead. Now it says the author is not dead. He, the author, or you know, a number of authors, they are vainly searching their names on Twitter to see what people are saying about them. In, in, in a way to say that these authors themselves are great lovers of technology. In yet another quote, Mary from the PCworld.com, who believes that technology is changing literature. Not only literature, it's changing human beings too. She says it is thanks to today's and tomorrow's technology because writing as an art form is evolving. Now, while words, that is the content, are still the same or are still the basics for literature, the ways in which they have assembled is innovative. And the way they have been assembled is to fit into today's digital formats. And these formats may have a wide repercussions, that is unintended consequences for tomorrow's literary scenes. Now talking about the positive effects of technology on academic writing. Now there are, you know, if you um, look at it, there are a number of uh, positive and negative effects of technology. But let's look at the positive effects because I think the positive effects go on to outweigh the negative. Now, if you look at uh, technology, has significantly improved students' written communication skills. Now, uh, to begin with, actually, technology has, you know, significantly worked towards improving the communication skills of students. There is an increased interaction over the internet platforms like WhatsApp, Skype, Insta, where the students communicate in written forms. Now, students also very conveniently use digital tools for um, writing and editing programs. Di digital tools such as maybe Google Classrooms, Google Forms, Dropboxes, interactive whiteboards, B Video, and Google Drives. In addition to this, there is also the automated grammar checkers to improve the written communication skills. Now, technology has also saved students' time by simplifying the assignments in modern learning. Now, there are digital platforms like citation, uh, citation generators, which can help save students time in adopting writing formats or maybe when they are you know writing the references bibliographies they can adopt the styles like mla apa chicago howard the writing process becomes much faster which can help students save their time to improve on other things it can also, you know, help them go in or conduct more meticulous research. Now, additionally, it also helps in editing, maybe proofreading solutions. As I said already, uh, like the grammar check, 
or to identify mistakes, make corrections instantly. And this automatically goes on to save a lot of time. Now, the ad adoption of digital tools in academic writing has also enhanced the skills of students through increased creativity. Now, academic writers, they figure out new information on the internet. They get access to other people's ideas on emerging topics. Now, this provides them an opportunity and also inspires the learners to innovate and work on personal projects as online platforms also allow extensive sharing of information. It is also easier to choose paraphrasing tools, plagiarism checks, to help students into writing more creative papers and achieve self-expression in their works. Now there is this online communication and other writing platforms which inspire and encourage collaboration. For instance, the digital social media platform allows students to complete group projects and develop skills for teamwork. Now, there could be an academic essay or any literary piece which becomes more explanatory to the students as they share diverse information that can be vital to their writing skills. It is also possible to generate discussion forums where academic writers address different challenges through the acquisition of fluidity, empathy, and interpersonal communication skills. Technology also enhances uh, the performance of students and help them to become more attentive and thoughtful to information. Now, students interact you know, in a better manner and more proficient writers can help guide in achieving better grades. But the content creation helps in enhancing appropriateness and accuracy and students can as well pay attention more to the details to improve their overall writing and skills. Now tools like grammar and plagiarism checkers, urban dictionaries, citation generators also improve the writing skills towards attaining better grades. Now, positively, technology has affected academic writing skills in many ways and in many forms. They include collaborations too. Now, technology has encouraged collaboration among students. And this has been possible and helped students to connect with one another online. Today, individuals can now create forums and also allow others to join. So as to discuss a topic of interest, anything that can be beneficial to them or research that is of serious use to an institution or a firm which is due for submission, now a group can handle it very quickly and also beat the deadline. Students can start a WhatsApp group communication. They can address problems in a given assignment of project. These groups can also use to help and train individuals. There can be some specific problems in a subject, but there can be something which was taught and which they never understood during that particular lecture. But due to this you know, online platform, individuals can comprehend the concepts, help one another in more than many ways. 
Technology also, you know, uh, helps immensely in improving research skills in academic writing. The internet happens to be one of the biggest resource of academic material. It has also helped students to improve in research skills on what they cannot be taught. And this has encouraged them to find information that they may need for a project or an assignment. Now, this online information can be got from online libraries and learning resources, which can be quickly discovered while browsing the internet. This definitely motivates and gives students easy time in their work and also to attain their goals. Now, to summarize this point here, it would be very safe to say that technology has significantly transformed students' academic writing skills to create both positive, it, you know, it of course creates both positive and negative impacts. But as I, as I said earlier, the benefits appear to outweigh obstacles as platforms like audio converters, vocabulary boosters, grammar checkers, they help in enhancing writing skills among the students. There is a little problem with over-dependence on technology or maybe plagiarism, cyber slang, that experts must revolutionize to ensure that significant achievements from technological innovations can be got. So conclusively here we can say that technology also immensely improves research skills in academic writing. Now coming to digital literature. Digital literature has been explained or stated by different people in different ways. Digital literature, or also known as electronic literature, is a genre of literature encompassing works created exclusively for and for digital devices. Just a minute. Yes. Yes. Sorry for that. Now, talking about digital literature, it is also defined as a construction whose literary aesthetics emerge from computation. That is, works that could only exist in the space for which it was developed, written, or coded. Now, Asheret wrote in his book, Cyber Text. Perspectives on ergodic literature, where he states that it is possible to explore, get lost, and discover secret paths in these texts, not metaphorically, but through the topological structures of the textual machinery. Similarly, Catherine defines electronic literature as digital bond and something usually meant to be read on a computer. She also clarifies further that this does not include ebooks and digitalized print literature. Now there is a definition offered by the electronic literature organization that is ELO where it states electronic literature as the works with an important literary aspect that takes advantage of the capabilities and contents provided by the standalone or networked computer. Now, this can also go to include hypertext fiction, maybe animated poetry. It can also include literary chat box, computer-generated narratives, 
art installations with significant literary aspects, maybe interactive fiction and literary use of social media. Now, Redberg argues that an advantage of a wide definition is its flexibility, which allows it to include new genres as new platforms and modes of literature as they emerge. Now, talking about transition into the digital world, a gradual transition into the digital world came about with the new advancement in technology, which helped making things more efficient and accessible. Now, this is uh, comparable to the release of printing press in the 15th century, as people did not consider it a major contributor to literature at first. Then in the 1960s and 70s was the creation of the personal computer, which allowed people to expand literature into the electronic realm. In 1877 came about the spoken word recordings, which began with the invention of, you can say, the gramophone. In 1930s, the first talking book recordings were made to hold on to short stories and book chapters. Then in 1970s, the term audio book became a part of the vernacular, just as cassette tapes entered into public. In 1971 was the year officially accepted as the year of the e-book. Now, although there were several contenders to the invention of an electronic book prior to this, it was Michael Hart, the founder of the Gutenberg project, who has accepted to be the official inventor of the e-book after creating a digital copy of the Declaration of Independence. Now, um, Going back to Ashrit's book on perspectives of erotic literature, or uh, you know, where he states, writing since has always been a special activity, it is reasonable to assume that textuality has been practiced as long as linear writing. For example, you know, there can be the wall inscriptions on the temple, maybe in ancient Egypt, which was connected, you know, two dimensionally, or the three dimensional from wall to wall and from room to room, a layout which allowed for a non linear arrangement of the religious texts in accordance with the symbolic architectural layout of the temple. Now, electronic literature, according to Haynes, becomes unplayable after a decade or so due to the fluid nature of media. Therefore, electronic literature sometimes also loses, risks losing the opportunity to build the traditions associated with print literature. Now, the electronic literature collection is also a series of anthologies of electronic literature published by the electronic literature organization, both in the CD, the DVD, and the online form. The genre of literature of works also includes, if you come down, you know, it also includes combinatory poetics, hypertext fiction, or interactive fiction, interactive poetry, or maybe, you know, network writing. Now, what is all this about? We'll just look at it very briefly. So, combinatory poetics is a program that gives access and presents data and then through algorithmic process 
modify or substitute the data. Talking about hypertext fiction, the hypertext literature, that is fiction or poetry, consists of text components that can be rearranged by the writer, or it can be read in a non-linear or multi-linear manner. When we talk about non-linear, it means not arranged in a straight manner. And when we talk about multi-linear manner, it is having or involving several lines. The IF or the interactive fiction is actually a software simulating environment in which players use text commands to control the characters. Just like, you know, it's the same as video games, adventure games or role play. So they control the characters and also influence the environment. Now, also known as literary narratives, either in the form of interactive narratives or maybe in the form of interactive narrations. Coming to kinetic or interactive poetry, now this deals in time-based poetry, its main distinction or characteristic feature being that these texts change through animation and the animation itself conducts the meaning. Here it shows progression, the different colored texts can add more meaning and this is also good for those people who don't like to just read with their eyes but see what the action of the work within the poem is. And finally, the networking writings, which is based on our collective experience of the internet. It has provided us, you know, a lot of opportunities for growth. Or you can say networking writings are rather a door to opportunities and growth. It helps in regular interactions. It helps where people give us suggestions. They give compliments and these compliments add to value. Writings can be improved and automatically there can be a growth in writings. There can be an exchange of perspectives. And it also helps expand horizons. Basically, how do you begin with? When you begin with, you begin to interact. You need the support of people. And finally, you begin to connect with one another. And so it says that networking or, you know, everything, the entire aspects of electronic literature helps us greatly. Coming to the next slide, that is literature as technology. Let us, look, let us look at literature as technology. Now the arts are emerging at the forefront of the scientific investigation of the mind. An increasingly modular view of the mind is beginning to appreciate the arts peculiar action of integrating an unusually large number of cognitive dimensions. Science produces information about the world, or we can say uh, about the relationship between certain modes of action and their results. Now this information gives rise to technology, which exploits these relations. Literature is closer to technology than it is to information or to science because it exploits a certain relation, a set of relations, rather than attempting to explain it. Now, Aristotle was mistaken when he claimed that literature is superior to history because history only deals with particulars in terms of cognitive sciences. Now, it is episodic knowledge 
while literature presents a general truth or semantic knowledge. And that would turn literature into a kind of science. The difference uh, never really worked. That is, the truth of literature are too diverse to be systematized, too contradictory. It is not clearly, it's not clearly a collection of useful information about the world. As Sir Philip Sidney finally put it, that poetry makes no claim, it is neither true nor false. Literature then is a technology. It is a set of techniques for exploiting certain relationship. And this relationship is something which is embodied. It's uh, between the embodied minds rather than the body of knowledge. Literature works. It transmits knowledge, information, and it also acts into the psyche of a person. Now, what we need to take up is the task of reverse engineering. We need to focus on the ways in which technology of literature is employed in the service of power. Now, the paradigm of interest it says there is no such thing as disinterested discourse. Actually, this does nothing to explain why literature works. How does it operate in the mind? How is it produced? It is this cognitive issue of art that the converging set of disciplines has begun to address. The idea that art is separate from science and technology which is both novel and mistaken on the contrary. Art is the primary technology of culture. However, it is, you know, intuitive uh, technology, maybe like walking or digesting food, one that we have no explicit knowledge of. Now here, what we are faced is with the task of reverse engineering which means disassembling the functional whole into component parts to discover the information that lies at the basis of the technology. That is breaking down, you know, something, breaking down the whole into parts, into small component parts, so as to understand and comprehend better as to what lies at the basis of technology. Now, it is this task of reverse engineering that literary and cognitive studies need to take. Now, focusing on the importance, we have already seen on the importance of literature and technology. As I said in my first slide, the uh, function of literature is also to preserve. Now, here when we talk about digital literature, there is also a need of preserving the works of electronic literature. Now, there are several organizations which are dedicated to preserving the works of electronic literature. For example, the UK-based Digital Preservation Coalition aims at preserving digital resources. Similarly, the electronic literature organizations prevention, archiving, and dissemination, popularly known as PAD, they bring about a lot of initiatives and recommend on how to think ahead when writing and publishing electronic literature, and also how to migrate works running on defunct platforms to current technology. Now, this, these are all ways of preserving electronic literature. Further, the electronic literature collection is also a series of CDs, DVDs, and everything else online. Now, the strategy is to make sure that the electronic literature is available for the generations to come, because we should not deprive the future generation of all the wonderful literature that we have. 
Finally, the Maryland Institute for Technologies in Humanities and the Electronic Literature Lab at Washington State University also work towards the documentation and preservation of electronic literature and hypermedia. So to conclude my presentation, in short, I would like to once again focus the technology has registered unprecedented achievements the world over. It has resulted in the affluence and prosperity for all. So there seems no need for literature to grow. Now modern technology is increasingly dominating the world and the domination is likely to become more profound and more pronounced in future because of the past developing tense towards creating human thinking and expressions. Literature in reality is the product of thought of every sane and gifted person who live all their ages and they need an environment of peace and tranquility. And naturally the advancement of present day accompanied with the comforts of life pro provided by modern technology can promote better literature and masterpieces in the arts. Now these pieces of arts or literature, that is poetry, prose, drama, these are all sources of sustenance to the soul of man. In today's ever increasing tension, good literature makes a lasting impact on the mind the human beings. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Are you there, sir? I've come. Yeah, ma'am, I'm here. I am here. Yeah. I've completed my presentation. So yeah. Thank you. thank you once again. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, uh, Hello. Questions? Yeah. Any questions from the side of participants? Hello. Yeah. Hello.
हेलो हुज दैट हेलो जब प्लीज वन आर्स अच्छा ओके या तोमर मैम ओके मैम सो आई इनवाइट मैडम मंगला तोमर टू प्रपोज वोट ऑफ थैंक्स ओके थैंक यू सो on behalf of hrd nagpur dr tomar feels privileged to propose vote of thanks to dr annie john ma'am for her thoughtful provoking informative and learner friendly lecture I think she got disconnected. So anyway, ma'am, uh, on behalf of the participants and uh, the UGC Human Resource Development Center of uh, Rajasthan Tukaroji Maharaj Nagpur University, I express my uh, gratitude and thanks to Madam the Professor Annie John for sparing. Uh, Uh, this time for this uh, refresher course and uh, uh, i am quite uh, confident that uh, the presentation of ma'am uh, must have uh,